it's a division by force, divorce, it's not going to be easy for them. If any of you have ever broken up with even just a boyfriend or fiance, you will know the devastation. Hey there, beautiful people. Welcome all. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Samantha and this is Relationship Sam, where we talk about all things love, dating, relationship, marriage. Basically, you feel it, we talk about it. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you seven lessons that we can take away from Devon Franklin and Megan Good's divorce. Officially, Devon Franklin has filed for divorce from his wife Megan Good. It's not good news, it's not great news, but there are some lessons that we can take away from their relationship and from their marriage. The seven lessons I'm going to be sharing with you in this video are lessons that I'm taking away and also lessons that I feel we can all take away from their relationship. So lesson number one from the Devon Franklin and Megan Good divorce after nine years of marriage is that a relationship doesn't end the day a relationship ends. If you've ever broken up with someone, you will know what I'm saying. You will know what I mean. That it comes, it's like it's a long time coming thing. People don't just wake up and break up. Like you don't have a marriage that just ends in one day. Whatever it is that they're going through, that they were going through in their marriage, it would have come from something, maybe something that even started way before they started dating. Something was there. There's certain things that you always feel like you're gonna be able to deal with or to cope with or to manage or to overcome and sometimes you don't overcome those things. So we don't know what it is that they're going through, what they've been battling within their relationship. It's their story to tell and unless they tell us, all we can do is just speculate and assume. But I feel like we have to be kind of gracious towards them because at the end of the day, this is a marriage. You don't marry someone just hoping and not just hoping, but thinking that your marriage is going to end. And um, that was the first lesson that I wanted to say that I'm taking away from this. And that brings me to lesson number two. Lesson number two is that you should not lose hope in marriage and in good and happy marriages just because somebody who you look up to has failed in theirs. We should never look to people. The only people who can let you down are the people that you lean on. So don't look at their marriage as the ultimate example. I even said it in one of my previous videos when I was talking about kissing frogs that we should not look to people, even though they may be men of God, they may be celebrities. Let's not look at people as our example, but let's look to the word of God for our example. As some of you may already know, in my regular life, I'm a flight attendant. And point number three that I want to make, I want to liken marriage to a flight. Just because you have taken off from one destination doesn't necessarily mean that you have succeeded in the trip that you have arrived to your final destination. You need to actually land at that destination to say that this was a successful flight. So I liken marriage to a flight and that you don't know that your marriage is successful until you reach the end, until you reach your destination. And in the case of marriage, the destination is death, until death do us part. I love one scripture when Apostle Paul says, I have run my course, I have completed my race, and this is just it. All of the people that we call great, we have to wait till their lives come to an end for us to say, oh wow, this person was truly faithful in their course. They really run their race and they completed their course. Joseph, Jesus, you don't know that a marriage is successful by the number of years that somebody has been married. And you don't know and you cannot know that somebody's happily married. People still get divorced after 40 years of marriage. Look at Bill Gates divorced after 27 years of marriage. So my point is, it takes a lifetime to know that a marriage is successful. So lesson number four is one that we've seen manifest a few times throughout celebrity marriages, is that celebrities are just like the rest of us. They are just people with more influence, who are more known, but they deal and they battle the same issues that each and every one of us do. We put so much undue pressure on celebrities and men of God God, but before they are men and women of God, they are men and they are women, they are people. So celebrities and men of God are people just like us and I feel that we should exercise more grace towards them and we should not necessarily put our hope in a person, whether they are a man of God, as Devon Franklin is a pastor and a man of God, we don't have to look to him to be our hope or our example for marriage because nobody is perfect. Only one man was perfect and that was Jesus. So all of us just look to God as the blueprint for our lives and how we should live. You know, there's a temptation to think 
that because you're so specialized and so skilled in one particular area that you're naturally going to be talented and skilled and able in another area and that's not particularly true so point number five is that just because somebody is a success or they are talented or gifted in one particular area doesn't mean that it naturally transcends to other areas of their life like if i'm gonna fly a plane i have to follow the principles of flight i have to follow the principles of that exact thing there are other principles that work to sustain a marriage. So lesson number six is that every relationship needs servicing. Just like a car, a brand new car coming out of the showroom, they'll tell you, come to us after 5,000 kilometers. Not because there's gonna be anything wrong with the car, but it requires that they check the oil, check this and this and that. Even your tires, after a certain mileage, you have to change your tires. And this is where marriage and relationship counseling comes in. It takes intentionality and purpose and knowledge and seeking knowledge, wanting to learn and to relearn and to unlearn certain things in order to maintain relationship. To It's like servicing a car, like we've said, it's gonna be, you're gonna need counseling in some points in time. Last, but certainly not the least, lesson number seven is that marriage is hard for everyone. We do have an adversary, we have an enemy who goes about roaring as a lion, seeking whom he may devour. So in this case, I look at it and I see that this is another godly marriage that has been attacked and that is being destroyed of the devil. So let's pray for each other that our marriages be, be sanctified, that our marriages stand the test of time to make this thing work because there's a bigger purpose that goes beyond ourselves as individuals. So, I want to be praying for them individually and together. They know, only they know what they've been battling and they know what they're going through. And even the whole process of divorce, it's a tearing apart. It's a division by force, divorce. It's not going to be easy for them. If any of you have ever broken up with even just a boyfriend or fiance, you will know the devastation. Not to mention somebody who you've been married to for nine years and had hope and aspirations to live till death do you part with it it won't be easy for them so i will just ask as the body of believers as christians to pray for them anyway be well stay blessed and i will see you on the next one <music>